welcome to the Voice of the Coast. I am your host, Danica Long. With me, we have Mayor Eugene Fulcar with the City of Franklin. And let's just get right to it, because I want to know, yes. like, how many how many terms are you in so well, far? Well, I'm, I'm in my second term. Second term. Uh, a year into my second term, more mm -hmm. or less. So, uh, you know, I'm still very excited. I, I enjoy what I do. Uh, you know, we, you know, I, I do it with a passion because I love my community. Awesome. Great. And of course, that means there's still time for you to do more work. Yes, we have work to do. And uh, many times uh, I say sometimes one term is too many for some people. And uh, <laughs> but uh, sometimes you need more than one term to really get some things done. And, and uh, that's what we're doing. Awesome. Well, let's get right to that. You yes. kind of gave me a good little segue. So one of the things that I know that you have been really digging into, no pun intended, and that, of course, is the water distribution system in Franklin. I know that has been kind of a source of contention, you know, for you, right. the city, all your employees, I'm sure, because you guys have been kind of replacing lots of water lines um, in the past couple of months. Yes, uh, I'm glad you've asked that because... We have many water lines in Franklin that were placed down in 1908. That is 115 years ago. So of course things are going to break. We had an unprecedented drought this past summer, unprecedented heat wave. So when you have unprecedented droughts like that with lack of rainfall, it causes the ground to shift underground and it causes our pipes to shift so we have to fix those pipes. We're very aggressive with fixing the pipes. When uh, they break, we fix them. We go back in with brand new equipment to repair those lines. I'm very thankful for Senator Island and also Representative uh, St. Blanc. We've gotten a $2.4 million capital outlay grant uh, where we are going to uh, make some other major improvements at our water plant with new filters and many other upgrades with our computer system uh, to uh, monitor and, and do the things necessary at the plant. But we're also doing major upgrades with valves throughout Franklin because if we can have valves, new valves placed throughout Franklin, we could seal off different right. parts of the city to repair lines. You know, we didn't think about that when years ago when they would put these valves down they were not marked and identified, okay, this valve is on the corner of 3rd and Willow mm -hmm. Street. And when streets were overlaid and repaved and re cemented and that sort of thing, if they didn't mark those valves, right. they were lost. And, yeah. and so, it would, uh, it, so by doing that, that means you can isolate certain yeah, we can areas isolate certain and you won't areas. have to shut off as many that is correct. residents or exactly. businesses. Exactly. Okay. We can seal off different sections of Franklin, repair those lines. So that that is what we're doing. Mm -hmm. We're repairing and replacing valves and getting these valves GPS and electronically monitored okay. and identified. So maybe 40 years from now, whoever the next mayor will be, it won't be me, <laughs> they could pull up on a disc or pull up on a computer. Okay, they have multiple valves that have been placed mm -hmm. in different sections of Franklin where we could seal off these valves and repair these lines without, without impacting, let's say, the entire city. So we're very aggressive about that. I, I don't believe in uh, laying fault or laying blame on anyone else in the past. I, all I can do is what's in front of us and positively look forward. You know, my mother would always say, Son, the good Lord put two eyes in front of your head for a reason. You don't have two eyes on the back. So all I can do is look forward, move forward in a positive way. I don't worry about the naysayers because someone, they're always going to have something to say. I'm okay with that. I'm built a little different, have tough skin, but we take care of what we have to take care of. We're going to do it the right way so that I don't believe in kicking the can down the road. I just like to get results. Well, I, I knew your mother, and she is she was a wise woman, yes. definitely. So wise words. So I appreciate that you share that with us. But um, and I noticed with you know you said it's 115 years old, right? And that's just so, some of the lines. Right. We have some that 
uh, maybe as old as 120, 120 years old. So what, I, what I'm, I'm getting at is that now you're saying it's GPS. You're using GPS. So I'm assuming, you know, you kind of got to get with the times. Yes. I mean, and I would understand not having to dig up all those and having right. to do it. So I guess piece and, piecemeal is likely the better way. Right, yes. Yeah. So as okay. a matter of fact, uh, we've been working with our engineering firm, Miller Engineering, and the contractors. And once we go in and start putting these new valves down, they will be forever electronically marked and uh, uh, done in a digital format so that we'll know where these lines are so that we can, uh, you know, shut off these valves and repair these lines. Awesome. Okay. Well, thank you for kicking off the first segment yes, uh, with something that has been kind of plaguing um, a lot of I guess, interest for people. Yes. So, yes. you know, on this show, the good, the bad, and the ugly. So come on yes. back. We're going to talk about more right here on The Voice of the Coast. Thank you. Welcome back to the Voice of the Coast. Let's get right back into it, Mayor Eugene Fulcar. Yes. Now, we, we ended on talking about water, but I have one more um, project that I would like to talk about. It's a long-standing project. Even I remember it when I used to go to the Franklin meetings all yes. the time. Casey Street, you know, tell us where you are in the process. Yes, we're very, very excited about Casey Street. We've, uh, we've had Casey Street in our capital outlay five-year capital outlay plan for the last probably 18 years. Every year we would always keep Casey Street in that capital outlay long-term project list as a wish list, and it has finally come to fruition where we've gotten the funding to uh, redo Casey Street. It's a $2.3 million project where we're redoing water lines, sewer lines. It's taking care of some sewer issues we've had on the Casey Street area drainage issues that we're addressing with Casey Street and a complete overlay yeah. of Casey Street. You know, Casey Street is a viable artery in Franklin right. uh, from Iberia and Casey to Maine and Casey. So we're very excited about uh, that street. Uh, you know, it was once said that Casey Street was a smoke and mirror dream but we were making it become a reality. And again, I think our legislative delegation for ensuring that, you know, we were awarded the funding for that uh, from when Sam Jones was state rep, Vinny St. Blanc, and also uh, Senator Island ensured that we got that funding to redo Casey Street. When do you foresee that being in completion? Well, sometimes in the spring of 24 it should be done. Okay. They've already started the right. work on Casey Street. It's a very complicated, very tedious job because you have many of the residents' mm -hmm. homes that, that are very close to Casey Street, so yeah. they have to kind of intricately work on Casey Street, but we're very, very excited on that particular project. Yeah, I might want to do a ribbon cutting for that. Oh yeah, we, we want to do <laughs> something right. for it because kind of it's, it's been a number of years in the making and uh, we, we're just very excited that we're getting that done. Awesome. Now, with all this money that's coming through down the pipeline, um, you also have some money uh, for playground equipment. Um, what was the other? Uh, new sidewalks. Yeah. You know, tell me about uh, this, yes, this money. We, we, we're very, very excited of the uh, funding that we've gotten through um, uh, Louisiana Parks and Recreation uh, for the uh, playground equipment. We're outfitting uh, Bruce Ard Harris, Franklin City Park, Caffrey Park, and Peco Park with brand new playground equipment. And we're very, very excited about that because the playground equipment in Broussard Harris and the Franklin City Park had been in some deplorable shape for some time. So I'm very excited that we're getting that done. Okay. Uh, we're moving forward with uh, our HVAC systems at Broussard Harris and O'Neill Recreation Center. That was a long time coming with COVID relief air conditioning units to help ward off any bacteria or infections mm. or whatever. <laughs> yes, so we're very scary. excited about that. We're also excited about a sidewalk grant that we've been awarded and we're moving forward on that to help increase in pedestrian traffic throughout Franklin. And I, and, and, and I like to also 
remind the citizens when we get these particular grants, these are earmarked funds that we can only use them for their intended purpose. I can't take a playground grant. We, got, we had 400000 for the playground grant and use that on my water sector. Okay. That's misappropriation of funding. Oh, yes. We cannot we'll, do we'll that. We'll have a whole other conversation yeah, if that, that was and the that, case. That's where you get in the line of uh, corruption, mm -hmm. and I don't operate like that. We've had four clean audits. I'm just very excited that we've been able to have these good audit reports because you have to present your audit reports to the funding sources so that they can see you're good stewards with your funding. So we ensure that we do these jobs and do them properly and correctly so that we can get these jobs done. And I'm very excited of the projects we're doing. So just for clarification, so I'll know, these are grants. So that means, I'm assuming you have a grant uh, writer who actually goes yeah. after these well, we, grants. We, or we do our grants in-house. Okay. Uh, you know, uh, between uh, Karen LeBlanc, my chief administrative officer, Mr. Ed, Tammy, Tiger, myself, we all play a part in cobbling together the grants. And then there are some things that we've outsourced with South Central Planning okay. uh, in HOMA to help us out with. But for the most part, we do those grants in-house. And they're specifically for those particular they're projects. Specifically gotcha. for those projects. All right. We're going to come on back. Come on back right here on The Voice of the Coast. Yeah. <laughs> Welcome back to the Voice of the Coast. Let's get right back into right. it. We've got a lot yes. to cover uh, with Mayor Fulcar with the city of Franklin. Uh, let's talk about another long-standing project. This is definitely well before I got here. I think yes. two, maybe 40 years, and that's the widening yes. of the Yokely Canal. That, yes. I know that's something that's been talked about throughout the yeah, years. Yeah, the widening of the Yokely Canal, uh, they started working on the funding and the entire project maybe in 1983. Mm. And uh, I think uh, Sam Jones was the mayor of Franklin. Uh, my dad was on the city council uh, of uh, Franklin at the time and they started working in conjunction with the St. Mary Parish government to uh, obtain the funding to widen the Yokela Canal. But it just takes a while in government, and sometimes the wheels of government oh, turns man. very, very slow. But we were able to uh, see that through, and uh, that project has begun. The, the Yokely has uh, been widened in different areas, mm -hmm. and they're continuing to work on it. They should be through sometime in uh, early spring. And I knew it was working relatively well because Friday before last, we had some torrential rains in, in the Franklin area. And I drove out to the Yokely Canal mm -hmm. near Bayou Bend Hospital to see how the water was flowing. It was full to the rim, but it was flowing. Okay. So that I knew okay. that it was working. So then I drove over to Weber Street near Tash Action Clinic mm -hmm. because normally the water would build up along Tash Action Clinic along Weber Street. Right. That water was flowing. Okay. So I knew that that piece of this widening is working and that's what we want. We want the water to flow to the uh, Yokely drainage pumping station mm -hmm. so we can pump that water out of Franklin. Now that's one place I don't think I've ever, I, I may have seen it, just don't know about it. So the Yokely Canal, is it a, I don't know, is it a, a heavily traversed, like for boating vessels? What exactly no, is the canal it's, it's for? No, it's strictly for, uh, it's strictly a drainage canal. Just dra okay, drainage and canal, And gotcha. all of the discharge from the Franklin sewer plant oh, yeah, is discharged well. <laughs> into the Yokely Canal. Okay. So there's not very much uh, no, okay, yeah. fishing that goes on in there. <laughs> right, okay. But, uh, you know, it, it serves as a, yeah. you know, years ago it was always done to serve as a drainage gotcha. when area. Gotcha. Well, I hear Yokely Canal, I never hear Because the Yokely, the Yokely it, Canal so. drains a great deal of water from Oaklawn, St. Joseph, okay. Katy, mm -hmm. the Columbia uh, subdivision behind Walmart, all of Western Franklin, all of that flows to the Yokely Canal. Gotcha. And uh, the Yokely Canal is uh, that drainage canal that, that, that's separate from the Bayou Tash. It doesn't connect to the Bayou Tash at all, but it just runs 
straight through. As a matter of fact, where Popeyes is in Franklin yes. and Family Dollar, the mm. car wash near the forest. That's, now I know. That's okay. the canal. That's gotcha. the Yokla Canal. Mm. But let me just make this clear. The discharge from the Franklin sewer pumping station is not pumped in that section. It's pumped I'm, much farther downstream. Yeah, thank you for that and then by the time, But it's already been treated mm -hmm. and processed so that when the water comes out of the uh, sewer lift station, it's been sanitized, cleaned, yeah. and everything else. And it's, it's pumped back out into the Yokely Canal, okay. and Mother Nature does what it has to do to filter everything out. Well, let me say thank you very much for that educational lesson because again, <laughs> I've always heard Yokely Canal, but it's Yokely Drainage Canal. It's the Yokely Drainage so, Canal, yes, yes. I appreciate that. Something else that has been a, a relatively hot topic and not just in St. Mary Parish, yes. and that is saltwater intrusion. Yes. Uh, early on, we actually talked to the port director in Morgan City right. for East St. Mary, but um, we didn't get an opportunity to talk to West St. Mary to right. see what, you know, the possibilities of saltwater intrusion occurring in those areas. So, but we're going to hold that question. So okay. we'll definitely get that going okay. because yes. we, everything we heard was New Orleans, New Orleans, but it was a possibility. It could have happened here. The conversation yes. was started. We just didn't get a chance to really fully have the conversation when exactly. things started getting to that point. Right. So come right. on back right here on the Voice of the Coast. We're with Mayor Eugene Fulcar with the city of Franklin. Welcome back. Let's get right into it. I don't have much more time left, but we're going to jump right into this whole conversation about saltwater intrusion. Of course, yes. we heard about it in New Orleans, but there was a possibility of it occurring in Franklin, um, at least on two two of your waterways. How yes. did you stop it, or did there have a little bit of an intrusion? Yes. Uh, what happened, we had been in constant contact with LDH and uh, the representatives from the federal government. The saltwater intrusion was very serious for us because we draw our water for the entire city of Franklin from the Bayou Tash. Mm -hmm. So we needed to slow down the saltwater intrusion by closing we, the gate on the Baldwin Navigational Canal, the floodgate, it was closed, and the Hanson Canal was closed because both of those dump off into the Bayou Tash. Mm -hmm. Thank God for the rainfall that we had recently gotten because that rain mm -hmm. comes down through different tributaries. Or we have heavy rainfalls that affect the Mississippi River. All of those different waters hit the tributaries that end up through the Bayou Tash and it flushes all of that salt water back out into the Gulf of Mexico and it dilutes that salt water. And I'm glad you mentioned so that. So we need that, we need rainfall. Because we were experiencing, I'm calling it drought 23. Yes. You know, it was a major drought, and uh, yes. and drying up those that that water um, and the the bed, I guess, is yes. what caused a lot of that salt. Am I saying it yes. correctly? Yes. Yeah. What 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 happens is start flowing. The 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 salt water starts to flow up the Baldwin Navigational Canal mm -hmm. through the intercoastal waterway, which comes from the bay and the Gulf of Mexico. Mm -hmm. So that salt water comes inland, and unless you could stop it or slow it down, mm -hmm. that's, the only, that's the only saving grace. Or the good Lord sends some heavy <laughs> rainfall. As I said, and as I said at a city council <laughs> meeting the other night, we really need to pray for rain because some good solid rainfalls mm -hmm. could slow it down and flush it out and wow. dilute that salt water. Awesome. And that, and so that's, we're good. Right, and that's, that was yeah, the good. saving grace. And we were really. doing daily monitoring and we were doing daily sample testings to ensure that the, the salt water, or the salinity level didn't go up very high. Because that would have gotten to drinking water. That's yeah, really the issue. Yeah, that's that was what, okay. the issue, Okay. Yes. All right, now let's get into new police chief about seven, eight months in. Yes. How are things in Franklin uh, as far as, you know, cases, crime? Yes, you know? Um, Chief uh, Cedric Handy is our new chief. Uh, he was appointed uh, and approved back in April. So he's been doing an exceptional job. Uh, he's been 
on top of a great deal of things. Uh, things have gotten very, very quiet. Um, I know many times uh, in law enforcement, it's a, it's, it's a pretty thankless job, and it's a tough job when you're in law enforcement. And uh, there, there are some times when a, a new chief sometimes might not be very well liked. But some of the folks who may not like a chief or law enforcement are the ones that are out there doing the wrong thing. But if you're doing the wrong thing and things are going on and you're out there shooting those guns or you're doing illicit activities, of course you're going to get a knock from Chief Handy yeah. and he's going to come and deal with you and his department and because uh, you know we're no nonsense and we believe in taking care of business the right way. Awesome. I had one more question, but we're going to save it for next time. Okay. But that's all right. Thank you very yes. much for giving us your time. We appreciate thank it. Thank you. As well as thank you for giving us your time. We'll see you guys next time. Make sure to subscribe to us on Facebook. We are KWBJTV22. Take care.